Hey folks, you guessed it. It's time for yet another custom lesson. This one has been requested by Taco Kun, and this person simply just wanted to see what it was like to try out his loadout. So I'll showcase what I was able to get with it. In any case, let's get onto the Guardian Spirits. Actually, the weapons first. I'm just going in order with, with the text. But I was tasked with playing Sword and Kusarigama. Now let's get on to the Guardian Spirits. So this player specifically played with the following Guardian Spirits and the following Soul Core. So let's get right onto it. First things first was Nightmare Bringer. Now my guess is that this player was simply trying to maximize damage from weapons. Hence picking Anima Charge, Awakened Weapon, Melee Damage versus Corrupted Enemies. Corrupted Theme here, Corrupted Theme here. So. There's just going to be this big emphasis on using corrupted weapons. So if you wanted to say a build to go with this overall, uh, for those of you who are not in the know, let's see if I have, I think I have at least a piece of it. So Magatsuhi's Grace would probably be perfect because you get life, anima, great sentience charge. So it, it boosts the rate at which you can awaken your weapons. You do additional yokai ability damage against corrupted enemies, which is great. Anima charge when your weapon is awakened goes up an additional 50%. Melee damage gets boosted even further by additional 20. And that's on top of the natural properties of a corrupted weapon when it awakens. So it's a real huge power play. Secondary grace could be Susano's grace where you get versatility, but I don't really necessarily need to show that. In any case, let's get back to the soul course. Just a good old brief discussion that you guys are used to by now. So Nightmare Bringer is ludicrously expensive. 10 anima all right that is crazy crazy expensive and it is quite a power play and it has the potential to inflict confusion with three different elements so if an enemy is weak or is resistant to any one of those elements not to worry you got the other two in the bag and against some enemies this won't work as well as say like yoshitsune nightmare bringer uh, but that's just because they're immune to everything but period and corruption which is why we have the whole corrupted sh shebang when it comes to those weapons in the first place that I was talking about. I, of course, am not going to be playing with those, but it's certainly an option you can use to upgrade your character. So Nightmare Bringer, 10 anima, it's very expensive. The special effects are quite good, especially if you are using corrupted weapons. Boosting this, of course, as much as you want is great. One thing I will say before I continue is that you need to get anima bonuses on this setup. Of course, having Magatsuhi's Grace will help a lot, but I would highly advise having good anima bonuses, good anima charge bonuses on these cores. I did not. I just had anima bonus critical anima, and I barely am in a critical state when I play. So this is pretty much just whatever Nightmare Bringer core I found, and it's brute, so that's great. That's basically it, but you'll definitely want to optimize your anima charge bonuses because as we're going to go through this you're going to see we have really expensive cores continuing onwards itsumade makes a return this one i strongly advise you boost to rank 30 not even so much for the corruption accumulation but because the anima bonus on purification is really important like i said you want really good anima generation you're going to need it because this one also costs eight that's really expensive. Other than that, I just got Yokai Ability Key Pulse because you know, I really like that. And you only need one per Guardian Spirit to have it apply to all Soul Cores. This just happens to have faster key recovery, which I guess is cool, but you can pick whatever you want. But again, this is probably one you want to boost to rank 30. Itsumade does a lot of damage particularly with multiple yokai realms that are generated from enemies but even on its own it can be quite powerful and it is there to help you apply corruption which as you can see there's clearly a synergistic effect going on with the cure the corrupted accumulation here and here and so there's that theme next up we have gozuki this was yet another request uh, i just ranked it up to 30 not because i cared about this but because i was seeing the limits of anima bonus final blow yet again Get a good anima bonus. It doesn't matter what it is, an anima charge bonus, farm Gozuki as many times as you have to or whatever, because you are going to be spending a lot of anima if you want to use this. Keep in mind, cost 8. This is a very powerful soul core. Um, it does a ton of damage, stagger stuff, knocks enemies flat, hits groups enemies. It's pretty ridiculous. So I know many players are like, what about Ipon? Ipon's so good. I'm like, honestly, Ipon is pretty tame compared to Gozuki, especially when he can capitalize on Gozuki power. Now look at this. Cost 10 cost 8 cost 8 like I said these are expensive you need good anima 
generation, period. So if you want to use Arch Yokai Talismans, be my guest. The second Guardian Spirit that was specifically something I needed to work with was Kuzunoha the Fox. So this one has by default anima bonus Onmyo Magic hit, so if you do use Onmyo Magic, this is helpful. But I was given very specific cores to work with, so let's start off with Mezuki. Mezuki, the only thing I was interested in was Yokai ability key pulse, everything else was whatever. Uh, this cost 8, this is expensive, so kind of the same thing where you need to make sure your anima is in tip top shape. This is a very powerful core that I see get underestimated. It does a lot of damage, hits multiple targets and staggers basically everything. So it's a really good powerful soul core. And there's this theme so far that I've been running with with this setup is that there's a lot of power plays. So play to the strengths of using power plays and it'll help you out. But I'll showcase that soon enough. Next up is Ryom and Sakuna. Uh, the anima bonus on me magic hit is a bit redundant because I have it here It's not going to stack that much higher. What is nice is that anima bonus enemy confused Yeah, boost that up as much as you can and then whatever else you want to get on here great, but yeah uh, Put realm in here. I would totally advise that and so getting this up. I think it goes up to like rank uh, AA or AA minus or something like that can be a real help when you are trying to spend your anima on these really expensive cores Ryoman is quite powerful. Aside from being able to apply Confusion naturally, it does a lot of hits and there is quite a low recovery time and I'll showcase that soon. Now the only cheap core that we have in terms of cost is going to be the Thunderstorm Oni B. You may ask, why did I pick this one? Well, simple. I have Fire and Ice right here. Might as well put on Lightning. And then I've got Corrupted, so I guess I'm good to go. I don't need Water, I don't need Fire, so I just went with Lightning. That's pretty much it. Uh, these stats are cool as you can see I didn't boost its rank whatsoever but if you find something that you like about it go ahead and boost it anima bonus elemental attack is something worth boosting this one happens to have life train yokai ability hit which is helpful but I didn't even bother ranking it up but yeah this is gonna be something in which you're gonna find yourself starved for anima and it is quite ridiculous so one thing I did to help alleviate that concern was I was using a demon horde katana so yeah, I get to every time I get a grapple, I get extra anima, and that is really helpful. So, as long as you have some sort of anima generation at your disposal, you don't necessarily need this, but you'll see I'm not using my usual sword and whatnot. I'm just using uh, something a little different, which is quite powerful. And, and funny enough, uh, this is using Izanagi's Grace, um, <laughs> which is a purity based grace, so it's not exactly like I'm in max anything. But in any case, let's showcase these soul cores just so you're aware of their properties. So again, as a reminder, I'm going to test the recovery animation of a soul core by seeing how soon my character will block. And that is going to be performed by me holding block during the entire animation of said soul core. So let's start off with Nightmare Bringer. Summon three tornadoes. I can act quite quickly. So these tornadoes can go off and I can do whatever the heck I want. Also of interest, something you may not know about. Nightmare Bringer is a little different compared to other cores in that even when Nightmare Bringer is out, look, I can actually activate another soul core as it's finishing, which is pretty handy. So here, look, you can see Oni B. It comes out. So there is a fixed animation time before you can use another soul core, but it's not like, oh, as long as the tornadoes are going out, I can't do anything. All right, see, I'm gonna try to activate Gozuki. And see, it comes out basically towards the end, so you can kind of sequence things. Next up is Itsumare. Now see how soon I can respond before the detonation, which is quite helpful. So, you can do some pretty cool things like Itsumare into Severing Spin. Now what about Gozuki? That's not Gozuki, my bad. Long animation, but pretty short recovery. So yeah, uh, Gozuki of course, if you hit a target, close. If it's close, it's gonna be a little different. So yeah, Gozuki has a lot of tracking, so you can be quite far away. Also it can knock up targets, which can be quite fun. But yeah, it's definitely pretty fast, but it costs a lot of anima. Let's get on to the secondary guardian spirit. What about Mezuki? Mezuki is a fairly long animation, fairly long 
uh, recovery time too. Uh, being able to act freely afterwards isn't too bad, but it's one of those animations you yet commit to. Ryomen Sukuna, on the other hand, is very interesting. You can actually buffer an input before the whole animation expires. This is one of those things that's actually really crazy. So it can be pretty wild. Yeah, I'm, I'm basically blocking even before the thing evaporates. Only B is arguably the fastest of the bunch. So you'll have a lot of fun with that. Now let's showcase some things pertaining to Yokai Shift. So Yokai Shift is massive power. All right, straight up just massive power. You have huge power cores, huge power plays, and so you just pretty much just go balls to the walls for it, man. Like, I'm not even joking. And because you don't really have much of a choice, you don't really have any long range cores. Sure, you can say Nightmare Bringer is perhaps your only long range core. Dude, are you. Okay, I'll just go with you up, man. But what you can do is quite thematic. Try Elemental Confusion, charge things up, and you see it can go into Gozuki right afterwards. It's pretty freaking crazy. So let me show that again. Charge it up. And Gozuki will work right afterwards. Other things you can do... Let's go Itsumare for Corruption, you know? You've got, you can basically do Quad Elemental Confusion, so that can be remarkable. And you actually have this on the phantom spirit as well so provided a target doesn't really move too much here's what you can do charge that up teleport in let's do mezuki kill it and it's just dead like this is just a phenomenally powerful yokai ship and it's all basically power plays so you're just gonna do that non-stop there are other options of things you could do like you could do laser beam into Ryoman to get tri-elemental confusion but as you saw I prefer to use Ryoman when I'm close range anyway as opposed to far away because of the fox guardian spirit attack so it's it's very powerful and so it'll just it, it's kind of strange how I find that these tools while they're expensive can be quite powerful so if you're able to basically use these cores you're almost effectively unstoppable and I haven't even touched base too much, at least with my character, when it comes to, say, things such as builds. Right now I'm just showcasing a couple things you can do with your weapons. Like just constant confusion. These targets are not going to be able to handle it. Let's showcase some of this stuff against the human just to give you a couple of ideas. Here, check this out. Ready? We're gonna die, right? Ah, uh, basically. Basically dead. Alright. <laughs> you got access to quad elemental confusion at a moment's notice, so you're, you're, you're honestly not gonna have much trouble. Try it again, Deadly Mark. More Beyblades. Blade Spin. I guess I'll do that. I mean, that's just ridiculous. There's just no chance that that opponent had. Um, I didn't even really get to use Mezuki, and so it's kind of like one of the things, it's like, oh, these targets die before I can really do too much to them. And always animation cancel. Water drop into something else. Just fancy stuff like that. Alright, now let's get on to the Brute Guardian Spirit. Again, you have three massive power plays, so you're going to be anima starred for a lot of this. But assuming your anima generation is great, some stuff you can do, alright? Do that, severing spin, hyper armor, everything. Just, yeah, do all the things, man. Use Gozuki, because why the frick not? It's Samadhi to blow him up. <laughs> I mean, come on. If you have the anima and you can do these things, this is straight up busted, man. Straight up. Like, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> And I haven't even really showcased too much involving Yokai Shift because enemies just won't have time. You got crazy key damage. I mean, look at this. Freaking dead, man. What am I? Th I can't do jack squat. Heck, you can't even throw out a second Nightmare Bringer. I mean, this is just this is just stupid. Straight up, man. These cores are so unbelievably powerful. 
Fire Gen with Gozuki. I mean, holy crap is this powerful. So your cores can almost effectively carry you. But I'll leave that to the side because I think working with the weapons is tantamount. Now let's show some cool things you can do with these weapons. So both of these weapons have timely guards, which can be especially valuable against humans. So of course, getting things off like Backwave Tempest is nice, but being able to keep the pressure can be awesome too. Target is dead. Anytime you need to animation cancel, you always got Oni B. Here we go. Alright, let's go, Mezuki. But junk. Guess I can finish it off with Ryoman for super extra kill. Yeah, it's pretty nutty. It's really hard not to, like, abuse these soul cores, just for your reference. You've got a lot of, like, thematic things you can do. Oops. Let's see what I like to do. I think I showcased it. Water drop into the night rain after sheet swap can be pretty cool. What you got? Quick draw, sweet so sheet swap onto the ground. Pretty nuts. I'm trying to resist using the soul cores. Maybe I'll just use the brute attack itself. Brute attack is again a nice extra attack you can worth it work with. Deadly mark. Oh, you got that hyper armor, huh? That's juicy. And it's dead. Let's go against the Yoki. Show some other things that could be possible. Alright, what you got? Let's go behind with Tiger Sprint. Ah, that didn't work as well as I'd hoped. Alright, Severing Spin. Oops. Ah, kind of thinking I used the Soul Core. I didn't really mean to. <laughs> Let me try that again. I would say using the Sheet Swaps can be very helpful to help you transition into all sorts of different types of plays. Alright, what do we got? Oh, come on. I was going to dodge back. Do Tiger Sprint. Oh, I was trying to dodge through. It didn't work out, huh? Usually after a Kusari Gamma Flash attack, I will do Blade Spin. It's pretty damn fast. Come on, buddy boy. But yeah, so that, those are just some things you can do with weapon play. Let me now showcase the whole package, assuming my targets just don't fold like a wet, like a cheap... I don't know, a cheap suit, right? Nope. Nope. Frickin' nope, dude. Oh, he's dead. Let's try this again. Oh yeah, by the way, you're gonna generate so much gauge just because of the nature of these soul cores. Straight up. Gozuki gives you a tremendous amount. Nightmare Bringer into Severing Oh, come on, Severing Spin, thank you. It's just dumb, you got the anima, everything dies. I'm like not even kidding you, man. Oh, god dang it, I'm messing up these inputs today. That's cute, isn't it? <laughs> What are they supposed to do with this? There's nothing. Keep in mind, I'm not even having supercharged weapons. Anima generation. I mean, sure, it's the dojo. Ow. Not to worry. Mezuki's gonna save the day. Right?
the uh, anyway, there's there's a lot of power plays. Bottom line, you've got access to a ton of power plays, and you should absolutely use them because they're expensive cores. And if again, if you have say, where is it at? Where, where are you, buddy? Where's my Magatsuhi's Grace? Here we are. If you have Magatsuhi's Grace. And you go seven piece with it and you have that anima generation and you can quickly awaken your weapon to get a ton of anima charge then you're in really good shape it's crazy and then if you want to say pair it with saruta hiko's grace six piece you can yokai ability charge yokai shift to make your yokai shift even more powerful then yeah go for it or or if you don't want to go for the extra say damage from magatsui's grace which i know 20 percent that is something to give up right but if you decide to go with blood of the yokai i can tell you your anima generation is gonna be off the charts it's ridiculous so yeah if you again don't have issues with anima this build is straight up busted you have access to four elements at all times and your power is going to be immense in any case i think there's enough about that let's now show this in action i will see you guys in a bit okie dokie it's time to play as the bad guy, Kashin Koji, and I'm gonna kill all the good guys, sweet. So, as a reminder, I really have to rely upon my weapons to help me generate anima. I'm not using anything out of the ordinary, and this would most likely fare better with things like Magatsuhi's Grace, or Saruta Hiko's Grace, or even something as simple as the Arch Yokai Talisman. But, that doesn't prevent me from doing cool stuff, just like as you saw there using Nightmare Bringer, Second Wind, and then dealing with another target while that whole animation's playing out. So now my objective is very simple. I need to kill one of these guys together. This Fist Sohaya guy is really annoying because he just blocks a lot. I'm like, dude, stop blocking, man. I, I, wanna, I want you gone. And then in the meantime, I've got that ninja interrupting me. So I'm like, you know what? Screw it. Realman, do some work. And then, yeah, it's dead. Thank you. So like I said, these slow cores are very powerful. I just need to make sure to have the anima to spend them. And then, alright, you're dead. Alright, another ninja. This won't really be any concern whatsoever. So I'm using Kusarigama plays, flash attacks, using that brute attack uh, in place of these really expensive yokai abilities. With the demon horde katana, I'm able to generate a ton of anima, and then I have anima bonus final blow, which just helps a lot. And then next up is Mumio. Alright, let's go put this annoying character in her place. So... Unfortunately, she interrupts me a bunch, and then I'm just like, screw it, Nightmare Bringer, do your thing. And that's, that's kind of the plan. It's just like, you know what, I'm tired of you guys. Here, have a soul core. I'm unfortunately having a little difficulty maintaining her rhythms, and I'm trying to attack her as much as I can, but it's just not working right now because I just haven't established the rhythm. Oh well, looks like I got enough anima, so go Zuki, thank you. Do a lot of key damage, and then yay, is in a drop. Keep her key low. Oh, she's dead. Okay, well, I guess there wasn't as much trouble as I thought. Next up is Hanzo, who can be very frustrating in the key damage department, so I'm actually trying to use the Timely Guard on him. And you'll see me use Sword most of the time because I'm a bit more comfortable with the Sword. And plus, uh, getting Azuna drops against humans can feel pretty satisfying. And then there you go, Confusion, so I'm going to have a much easier time. He won't recover as much key. And so now I just need to keep the pressure going. And look at that. Ooh, Quad Elemental Confusion. Oh my god. He, he's basically not able to do a single thing, which is pretty great. I'm actually more annoyed by the ninja who's interrupting me and depleting my key. But not to worry, I'm taking out Big Daddy Hanzo himself. He's done. And then now it's just this little ninja before I get on to the final enemy of this scroll. I use Itsumare like one time. As you can see, it did a lot of damage. And it's generally pretty safe to do that. Now, it's time to kill the protagonist of Neo 1, William. Yeah, that's right. Can't handle Neo 2, man. Go back to Neo 1, dude. All right, so I've inflicted corruption. I'm trying to deplete his key. And I'm just trying to keep a lot of pressure while he, of course, is gonna do all sorts of shenanigans. And Nightmare Bringer, thank you. Oh, it didn't inflict confusion though. Oh no! The Kusa pull didn't work out as well as I had hoped. Anyway, not to worry, I've got Timely Guard. And I've got that anima bonus there, so I'm just going to generate some anima with Backward Tempest into a final blow. Gozuki does a good amount of key damage. Let's go back in. Let's deplete the key. Ooh, nice. Weapon has awakened, which makes it extra spicy. He's still blocking because he freaking annoys me and sucks. So let's switch to Kusarigama, deplete his key. I was trying to go for a Yokai Show transition. I'm going to just throw out Nightmare Bringer. 
and then, oh yeah! Awesome! Very, very nice. So, continuing onwards, I'm just prepping for Yoka Shift, and here we go! I'm unfortunately not able to take advantage of Yoka Shift as well as I wanted to. Throw out Baku, the attack, Gozuki. I mean, it's still pretty powerful, even if it was suboptimal. Nice! Paralysis into an Azuma drop. Great, great, great. Alright, let's see what's next. Realman, just cause I almost died, that was quite risky. I'm still hesitant about that burst attack. I don't know what it is, I just kinda like stand there awkwardly. But okay, continuing onwards, I just need to make sure I don't get destroyed by a living weapon, which is quite threatening, especially since it has a saturated effect on it. And then, ooh, ooh, lightning, let's go. Nice, reverse impact into a brute counter is always spicy. Let's get that back with Tempest final blow thing going. And then, oh god. He's being slow. Oh god, windmill, what do I do? Chewing through. Very nice. Oh god! Alright, back with Tempest yet again. Stab him on the ground. Mezuki, because he dodges away. Oh no, he's doing living weapon. Why can't we do a living weapon, man? Not to worry. I've got all the soul cores. I've got an awakened weapon, too. Very nice. Knock him down. Excellent. Stab him. Look at that anima generation. And again, that makes such a huge difference with this setup is when you can just generate enough anima so you can always reliably throw out these soul cores. It can be so cool when you're like, hey man, I can just do Nightmare Bringer a bit more often. Or just use Gozuki. And then get more anima. And then, do I get a stab? Nope, I decided to go for Itsumare. Very nice. It does a good chunk of damage, but I've already applied a ton of confusion. Oh, sorry, corruption, so it's not really gonna apply as easily. Oh man, that threw me off. It's okay. I'm gonna throw you off too. Very nice. Let's kill him. Just, now it's just it's just the same game plan. Do a lot of corrupted crap. Do a lot of soul core spam and just watch him die. As he is now. Go back to Neo One, you're dead. Looks like the bad guy does win after all. Any case, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. And of course, I will see you guys next time. Do a roar for me. Yeah!